If you guys want to stay up to date or ask me any questions about Destiny and GMs, make sure to join my Discord server with the link in the description below. Yo, what's going on guys? It's Gminers here, and in this video, I'm going over the best tips I have for completing GMs. I used to farm these when I just needed materials and exotics, but now I go for Conqueror each season, so whether you struggle to get GMs done or you just want to get better at them, this is the video for you. But before we get into things, if you guys do find this video useful, make sure to drop a like and sub down below. Subbing is completely free, it helps me out a ton, and you can always change your mind later. My first tip for players attempting GMs is that you need to learn how to play multiple different classes. It sounds like a super simple thing, but I see way too many players running around only on the class that they are comfortable with. I was a Warlock main for like the last two years of Destiny, and I will be the first to admit that Hunters are way better for Grandmaster content. There are multiple different GMs where you can make your life easier just by running a specific class. This week's GM, for example, which is Proving Grounds, I went over how using the Horfrost chest piece on Titan made dealing with the fireballs in the boss room super easy. I know most players want to go and get those exotic armor pieces at the end of the strike for the class they play the most, but it's way, way easier to learn how to do GMs at their easiest before you go and run the classes that might make the clear slightly harder to get. Before I get on to tip number two, I did want to mention that the giveaway we're doing right now is almost over. You can enter with the link in the description below if you want a chance to win some gamer subs and some gaming peripherals. Tip number two would be in most cases to always run with an invis hunter. Omnioculus is great, especially since you can pull off a revive and then immediately smoke yourself and your teammates. Graviton forfeit is also super strong for the increased invis duration. Depending on your stats, you should be able to also have 100% uptime on invis with high strength and mobility. Personally, I don't think it's worth it to run high strength. Most of the time, even without running a 100% uptime build, when I need invis, I end up having it, but do whatever works best for you. To get the absolute most out of your void subclass, make sure to run Gambler's Dodge, Trapper's Ambush, Vanishing Step, and then Echo of Obscurity. This lets you smoke bomb for invis, dodge for invis, and to regen your smoke bomb, and then smoke bomb once again. You're also going to have echo of obscurity so that you can infinitely finish enemies to stay invis. Also, reactive pulse helps to give you an overshield on finishers if you want that too. Invis also has a lot more strengths than just hiding or reviving. I use this to get objectives done quickly like dunking orbs and other parts of strikes that require you to stand in the open like capturing sink plates. Tip number three is worrying about your ammo economy. GMs are way easier if you have an abundance of special and heavy ammo to take out champs and mini bosses. You also don't want to go through an entire GM and then show up to the boss fight with nothing to kill it. Having one player on Atheons with the Sect of Insight mod allows you to generate special and heavy ammo on finishers. You could also just run special finisher. This will work with Aeons or you can just use this if you only want to rely on using special ammo. Aeons are specifically strong in GMs though because each champ that you finish will drop a full heavy brick. We also like to mash our heavy weapons with the acute burn of the strike, so we're also dealing 25% more damage than normal with it. So having ammo at the ass makes taking down mini bosses way easier. You don't have to do this for every GM, especially if you take in weapons with generally good ammo economy like linear fusion rifles, but if you bring something like galley and rockets in, this helps a ton. Tip number four is something I highly recommend if you are new to GMs, which is going in with a game plan for the boss and other difficult encounters. Last season, we had Birthplace of the Vile. In this strike, there are two notoriously hard parts. First are the plates that you need to control while adds are continually spawning with Screebs, and then second is the boss room because you end up getting flooded with more adds. When I ran it last season, we were able to get this GM done first try because we went in knowing that these would be the places we needed to make our build centered around. As always, we went in with an infinite invis hunter so that they could take control of the plates because it was the safest way to do this. And then for the boss room, I was running Osmiomancy gloves with cold snaps. I could throw one grenade at each ad spawn and freeze everything while getting my grenade straight back. This made the boss fight super simple as we weren't always looking over our shoulder to watch for ads. Even if you don't know the GM, watch a guide and check what other players are using to make things as simple as possible. It doesn't have to be the absolute best strat that exists, as long as it makes things easier, then it works. This also goes back to the first tip where running different classes helps a ton. There is a cheese or a strat that makes every single GM easier, which often revolves around an ability or a super that one class has. 
And then lastly, guys, for tip number five, just have fun. Nah, I'm kidding. Could you imagine if that was a tip though? Jams aren't fun. We're here for the schloot. Okay, so tip number five is to stop playing aggressive. Even though I am physically a Warlock main, mentally I am a Cran Eater in PvE, I play way too aggressive because most of the content in this game is crazy easy and it doesn't have consequences when you die, but GMs will punish you for this. The biggest thing I had to learn was to play more passively because I was constantly dying in places where I couldn't be revived, and I was also just wasting res tokens and making it harder for my team in general when they were down a man. Managing how aggressive slash passive to play is one of the hardest things to master in end game content. In GMs, this tends to be where you want to play at your most passive, because no matter how much resistance you have or healing you are getting, you will get one shot. I'm not saying that you should always hide and sit back, but 9 times out of 10, playing more passive and taking more time to kill something rather than trying to bake it is better. There are definitely, definitely times where you need to play aggressive to kill something or to push to a new location, which is exactly where you should be aggressive, but you don't need to go up and start 1v1ing champions. These are the five main tips that have helped me out a ton when doing and learning brand new GMs. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below or join my Discord and ask in the end game channels where you can get some help. That's all for this video, guys. As always, have a good one. Peace.